All right, good morning. This is the first lab. This is gonna be the respiratory lab. We're gonna try and do this Wednesday and Friday as well, depending on what section you're in, but I'm gonna go through it quickly for two reasons. One, we won't have a lot of time in lab, and two, some of you may not get into lab, so hopefully this will give you enough to get by for the lab practical, which may be in a couple of weeks. So I'm gonna go through the sheet. You got the terms to know. Some of these terms are just on the models. So they'll have a little asterisk if they're on the models and not on the cat. So we'll go over a few of the models quickly and then we'll go over the cat in a separate video so I can keep these things a little, a little smaller. All right, first, I'll go kind of in order. We'll look at this torso model first, diaphragm. It's this little thin sheet of skeletal muscle, kind of separates the thoracic and abdominal cavities. You can see that in the models. So you can see it on the cat really easily as well. Some of the stuff's from last semester, intercostal muscles, just the muscles between the ribs, they're also used as respiratory muscles. And then some of the stuff, ribs, if you can't get those, you're doomed anyway. Sternum, which of course is not on this model. Uh, so that's kind of stuff on the torso models. Uh, we'll get to the airways and the lungs here in a bit. Next thing, we'll move over to a skull. All right, you got the head models, the skulls. Go through a few parts. These will only be on the head models. This is too hard to find on the cat. But let's see, all right, on the skull sinuses, those are the hollow spaces in the bones of the face. Mainly they act uh, to lighten uh, the weight of your head so you don't get neck injuries as easily. They also act as resonating chambers uh, for your voice, for vocalizations. So just you know, identify a few sinuses probably on these half heads. Then this right here is a nasal cavity. You got the nostrils, which are also called external nares. It's kind of where you pick your nose. And then the back end, this constriction right here, it's usually called the internal nares. So this whole area is the nasal cavities. And in the nasal cavities, you'll notice there are these three kind of curled bones. These are called the concha bones. They help disrupt air flows, humidify the air, clean the air. We'll talk about them a bit in the lecture. But for lab, you just need to identify them as concha bones. There's three of them. The one at the top is the superior concha bone, the middle concha bone, and the inferior concha bone. Meatuses are the spaces underneath them. That's kind of where the air would flow through. So if this is the inferior concha bone, the space underneath it is the inferior meatus. Middle concha bone, middle meatus, superior concha bone, superior meatus. Then the palate. Palate is just that plate that separates the, sorry, nasal cavity from the oral cavity. So this whole thing is a palate. It's separated into two parts. The part that's supported by bone, that's the hard palate. Then there's a fleshy projection out the back, that's a soft palate. On the skulls, of course, there's no soft tissue. So all you're seeing here is the hard palate which is a palatine bone and the maxillary bone you might remember from last semester. The nasal septum, that's a perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and the vomer bone. It's just that plate right there separates it in the left and right sides. Then 13 on your sheet is auditory tubes. The auditory tubes are small tubes that connect the nasal, the uh, the middle ear with the pharynx, the outside environment. So this little kind of hole you see right here, that's supposed to represent the eustachian tubes or auditory tubes. It's a way to equalize pressure between the atmosphere and the middle ear, which is an air-filled space. On this one, that little brown slit-like opening there, that's the opening of the auditory or eustachian tubes as well. And you may remember it from the ear models you looked at last semester also. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? All right, pharynx. Behind the nasal cavities, so from this point to this point, this is a pharynx. It's basically your throat. It's a common passageway for both digestive and respiratory systems. I typically won't ask it on the cat, but on a human, you should probably know the regions and the pharynx. So we'll take this pharynx and split it into three parts. The first part, which goes from the back of the nasal cavities here to the end of the soft palate, that's called your nasopharynx. Then, from the back of the soft palate to this little thing here, this is called the epiglottis. That space right here, kind of between my finger and the probe, right behind the oral cavity, that's the oropharynx. And then from here, the tip of the epiglottis to where the respiratory and digestive systems diverge, that's the laryngopharynx. So those are the three parts of the pharynx. Those will only be asked on the human models. Then, if we keep following the airways down, after the pharynx will be the larynx. Now you have some pieces of the larynx here, but there's a nicer model I'll pull up in just a second that shows it better. This 
is our larynx model. Does it matter? Look right on there. Pardon? Does it matter which way I turn it? Um, no. I don't, well, don't know. Try it that way. Whatever works, Gail. Okay. All right, this is a model of the larynx. Trachea is down here. So this is the larynx. This bone here is a hyoid bone. It's kind of what the larynx is attached to. So we'll look over some pieces of the larynx first. It's made of a number of cartilaginous units. Three of them are single pieces, and two of them will look at are paired. This big, broad, shield-shaped piece with kind of a little notch in it here, that's called the thyroid cartilage or the thyroid shield. Then below it, there's a heavy-looking ring right here. It says number two on the model. That's a cricoid cartilage. If you follow it to the posterior, cricoid cartilage becomes much bigger and blockier. Of course, the thyroid shield is kind of cut off right here. So that's your cricoid cartilage. And the third piece of single cartilage, this little flappy thing here, this is the epiglottis, usually described as a leaf-shaped piece of cartilage. Uh, when it's open, that's the position would be when you're breathing, air would go down here through the glottis and eventually down to the lungs. When you swallow, part of the swallowing reflex closes this, and that's going to help direct food to the back here posteriorly, which is where the esophagus would be. These three pieces of cartilage, the thyroid, cricoid, and epiglottis, you can find those on the model and the cat. The next two pieces will not be on the cat. They're too tiny, but I'll use this model. Right here and here, there are two pairs of cartilage here. These little tiny pieces look a little bit like a bit of candy corn. Those are the corniculate cartilages, one here, one here. And they articulate with some bigger blocks of cartilage right here, number four on the model. That's your retinoid cartilage here and here. These have muscle attachments, and they can actually move to change the tension on the vocal cords. Now on this one, the suede leather probably representing vocal cords, but there's really not much to see, but that's what they're controlling the tension of. And then, of course, below the larynx, you'll have the trachea. And again, corniculate and retinoid cartilage will not be on the cat. The hyoid bone is also not on the cat. Now, let's go through some of the other airways. We'll use a torso model for that. All right, so the larynx, here's the thyroid cartilage. See that all right, Gail? All right, cricoid would be here. Below that, this is a trachea. It's just a, a connective tissue tube, a lot of C-shaped hyaline cartilage ring, so it doesn't collapse when you inspire. If you follow the trachea down, you only have one trachea, and of course you have a right and a left lung. So the trachea splits into two smaller airways. These are the primary bronchi. So one trachea splits into a right and a left primary bronchi. They lead to each lung. Then, once you get in the lung, the primary bronchus on either side is going to split into what they call secondary bronchi. Secondary bronchi lead to the lobes of the lung. And let me get the rest of the lung bits over here so we can see how many lobes are on each side. Hang his lungs back in here. of models for lows, but let me hang those back up. Now, when you look at these lungs, you notice the left lungs, this little groove here, that's actually a fissure. You could stick your fingers in there if this were a real lung. You have three lobes on the, get them on the right side, three lobes, <laughs> spaz. Three lobes on the right side, one, two, three. So that's the superior, middle, and inferior lobe on the right side. Left lung's a little smaller because the heart, left ventricle projects on that side, so the Left lung only has two lobes, superior and inferior. Now, I might ask you the lobes of the lungs on a human, not on a cat. It has a different number of lobes. You don't need to worry about their names. But on a human, three lobes on the right, superior, middle, inferior, two lobes on the left, just the superior and inferior. That means when you go from the primary bronchi into the secondary, the secondary bronchi go to each lobe in the lung. So the right side has one, two, three, secondary bronchi. The left side, we can see them here, only has two for two lobes. That's about as far as we'll go on the human model. Primary and it might go secondary. Gets too hard to sell what's what if you go further than that. On the cat, we can go from primary to secondary when we look at tertiary bronchioles, which are divided inside the lobe of each lung. We'll look at those in a bit with the cat. The only other thing on the human only 
this guy's head. It's the only thing that has it. But if you look at the conca bones, superior, middle, and inferior, see how the inferior has been cut away? There's a section missing. That little brown dot, that's the opening to the nasolacrimal duct, which is a duct that would go all the way up to the eye, and it drains the fluid out of the eye into the nasal cavity. So that's the opening to the nasolacrimal duct. I think this is the only model it's on. You may be able to see it in the skulls. That hole right there is actually the nasolacrimal duct. It drops from the orbit down underneath the inferior concha bone. Okay, shut that one off for the model.